Car manufacturers are not the innocent party in big price hikes. So don't give them a pass. Contacting a manufacturer about the gouging practices of its dealer network is like contacting Satan himself about sins going on. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. Buckle up for another great THG show with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today we're discussing the real reasons behind huge price increases. We've been chiding dealers for their greed throughout the pandemic for taking advantage of car buyers, and they definitely did all of that. But did you notice that during a time in which manufacturers sold far fewer cars, that they also posted record profits? If you didn't take note, you should have. The reports have been quietly coming in for the last two years, as you'll see in a moment. Yes, like how many car manufacturers did you hear about getting into financial trouble as a result of the pandemic? Pretty much none of the major players. Instead, we saw headline after headline about record profits like this one. Automakers see huge profits thanks to pandemic. Thanks to pandemic? The media had us thinking no good could come from COVID, but the dirty secret of the microchip shortage is it's been really good for the automakers. Like Winston Churchill said after World War II about the UN, never let a good crisis go to waste. Car makers definitely didn't let the pandemic crisis go to waste. Ironically, with all the attention the industry has put on EVs and all the claims GM has made about getting to the full EV lineup faster than anyone, General Motors announced it expects to build fewer electric cars by the end of the year than it previously forecast, citing a slow start to production and a new battery plant in Ohio. Yeah, right. Like this nonsense headline from Mary Barra, the GM CEO explaining its electric vehicle strategy. EVs for everyone, including pickups, SUVs, luxury, and crossovers. I didn't believe that nonsense story for a second when it broke. The battery plant excuse is just a cover story. Many said GM knew they'd be shifting their strategy from EVs from the moment they made the announcement. The automaker went on to say it was able, somehow we did it, to clear most of its backlog of gasoline-powered vehicles. Read that. Highly profitable ICE engines awaiting parts in the third quarter, helping push net income up 37% and revenue to a record high. Boom. That right there is the real reason. Right. GM posted net income of $3.3 billion in the quarter ending September 30th on improved truck production, better microchip supply, and rapidly rising MSRP prices. Global revenue rose 56% to $41.9 billion, and adjusted earnings before interest and taxes rose 47% to $4.3 billion. GM earned $3.9 billion in North America before interest and taxes an 83% increase and its adjusted margin for the region rose to 11.2% from 10.3%. Wow. Commenting on GM's quarterly earnings call, CEO Mary Barra said, while the operating environment remains challenging, our team continues to adjust quickly when and where it needs to. This is especially true of our supply chain and manufacturing teams. Read this to heck with the EVs. Let's crank out highly profitable ICE engines. <laughs> GM reported record earnings for 2021, despite struggling with a shortage of computer chips and other parts that crimped its ability to build and sell all the cars and trucks it wanted. But it certainly built the highly profitable vehicles it wanted because quarterly earnings reached nearly $2 billion, excluding special items, topping the consensus forecast of $1.7 billion from analysts. That allowed the company to earn $10.4 billion for the year, excluding special items, up from $7.1 billion a year earlier. Over at Ford, the news is just as rosy. Their fourth quarter net earnings surged 133% as North American sales volume returned to pre-pandemic levels on the backs of much higher MSRP levels. Right. Executives say the sales recovery at Ford reflects improvement in supply chain woes that hampered production and shrank inventories in late 2021 and early 2022. Life is no different at Toyota. Toyota booked a robust operating profit margin of 9.5%, up from 8.1% the year before. This headline broke at Automotive News way back in May of 22, that Toyota breaks profit records as it shrugs off pandemic semiconductor shortage. Toyota broke annual profit records despite the ongoing pandemic and a global semiconductor shortage. Toyota has exercised so much greed that they added port installed options to their vehicles, even on vehicles made right here in the US. <laughs> like yeah. this consumer asks, can someone please explain what this means if Highlanders are built in the state of Indiana? What is the meaning of port? It would make sense if the vehicle is coming from Japan and accessories are being installed at the port. I've seen a ton of Toyota contracts with port installed options, tons of them. And this is something Toyota has been doing for years now. It actually is not a new tactic for them. 
They just went into full consumer gouging mode when sales slowed down. Everywhere they shipped from became a port. Hello, I'm Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications about coming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on the ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Over at Honda, it's the same record profit story. Automotive News featured this headline also in May of 2022. Honda posts higher than expected annual profit, but warns of headwinds. Warns of headwinds? Nice little alert to try to detract from gouging consumers. It goes on to say automakers such as Honda have been forced to slash production due to a shortage of microchips amid an increase in costs amid China's COVID-19 curbs and the war in Ukraine. It's the story that all manufacturers have wanted us to believe. Right. The war in Ukraine, the pandemic, the chip shortage. Friends, we were just being played. Even Stellantis got in on the party. This was reported way back in August of 2021. Stellantis reports record profitability in North America in first half of year. Sales of Jeep, SUVs, and Ram trucks drove Stellantis to record profitability in North America for the first half of 2021 as a global microchip shortage kept transaction prices high and mixed strong, prompting the automaker to increase its annual guidance. Adjusted operating income in North America was $6.2 billion, about five times more than last year when Fiat Chrysler Automobiles idled plans for eight weeks amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Subaru also got in on the party, reported back in May of 2020. Automotive News carried this sorry-sounding headline, Subaru dodges COVID-19 for now as operating profit doubles. Oh, poor Subaru, dodging COVID-19 to the tune of huge profits. Yes, the May 2020 report showed Subaru's operating profit more than doubled in the last quarter as it dodged much of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic that broadsided sales and production at rivals. Subaru had only minimal exposure to China, which became the epicenter of the global outbreak in February and March. And the Japanese all-wheel drive specialist did not suspend factory output in the U.S. until March 23rd, just days before the quarter ended. Subaru did shut down its factory in Japan on April 11 after the books closed. The article went on to say that in preparation for the belt tightening ahead, Subaru executives returned portions of their pay through September and up to 30% of their performance-linked compensation for the past fiscal year. Aw, those nice employees gave their income back to the greedy corporation? Well, what about Hyundai and Kia? Well, there's this headline. Hyundai profits surged threefold on pandemic rebound with a cute little footnote tying into the chip shortage story. South Korea automaker warns that worldwide chip shortage could hit recovery. But the Korea Herald reported in July of 2022, earnings surprise expected for Hyundai Kia. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. South Korea's largest and second largest car makers, Hyundai Motor and Kia, are expected to deliver earnings surprises with record high profits in the second quarter on improved product mixes and a weakening Korean one. According to the securities industry, Hyundai Motor was expected to record 2.3 trillion won, that's $1.7 billion, in operating profit in the April-June period, surpassing the 2 trillion won mark for the first time in eight years. Now, how did they do this? Despite unfavorable factors like all of the excuses the other car makers used, amid ongoing shortage of automotive semiconductors such as COVID-19 pandemic, Russia-Ukraine war, and local cargo truckers nationwide strike, the car maker sales strategy in high cost SUV models and luxury brand Genesis cars worked. Hyundai Motor reported a near three fold jump in first quarter net profit as demand for sports utility vehicles and its premium cars rebounded strongly from the coronavirus pandemic. However, analysts cautioned that a worldwide chip shortage could derail the sales recovery at the South Korean company. Global vehicle demand began to pick up in the second half of last year as countries reopened their economies. You see, friends, literally every car maker out there shifted their strategy to making high-end, high-buck vehicles. And you, the car buying public, decided that you wanted a new vehicle anyway, so you paid a premium to get your hands on those cars that many of you are buried in financially right now. Even though a lot of that stuff that was produced was junk. Right. And right now, both Honda and Toyota are playing the victim game with threatened production cutbacks for, you guessed it, pandemic-related shortages. As Paul Harvey would have said right here, and now you know the rest of the story. 
I'd like to take a moment to alert our newest viewers that you can also check us out on Facebook. Please drop by, give us a comment on a post, and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website, thehomeworkguide.com. It's loaded up with free resources for car buying viewers, and we now offer a blog post there too. For those of you who want to show us some love with a tip, there's a super thanks button now below the video, and there are links in the description box below. You can easily find them by clicking on the Read More button. All right, if you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back, and to all of our faithful subs out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.